Hello, in this video, I want to start off some of the uh, more instructional videos that we'll be doing on the series on accelerationism. I'm really excited to do this series because I think that accelerationism will be a really interesting uh, set of things that are debated about on the upcoming water resolution. And for what I've talked about with some other people, it could also show up in a lot of the different LD topics that could be coming in the next year. And so I think accelerationism overall is just a really important thing to talk about. If you haven't, make sure you watch the intro to accelerationism video that I did uh, to start off this series because it gives a lot of context about things that are really, really important for you to go into the rest of the series or to just walk into a debate in general. I think it can be really scary if you don't watch the intro to accelerationism video and don't understand the difference between right and left accelerationism before you walk into a debate about uh, accelerationism as a whole and its relationship to the water resolution. So I think that if you're really looking for an intro to some of the like terms and ideas that just kind of set up how accelerationism is used in debate, definitely tune into that, that video because in this one I want to dive a bit more deeply into talking a little bit in detail what I think about accelerationism as a negative strat versus policy teams, the ways that I think it can unfold on the water topic and what I think some of the strengths and weaknesses of it are in order to begin to talk about uh, what I think maybe some of the ways in which you can be thinking about how you should frame some of the questions on the flow about like the framing and thesis portion of the debate and that'll ultimately lead us into like the next video that we'll be doing kind of continuing on with that conversation um, but in order for us to kind of start with all of that we need to first figure it out like what is the relationship that is going to happen between accelerationism and water on the upcoming resolution in my personal opinion I think that there are a lot of interesting ways to have conversations about like all the eventual topics that will come up in the water resolution concerning things like techno technological development, green tech, and like different use of water technology in order to change the way in which water is like dispersed. I also think that there's a lot of arguments to be had about the relationship between the development of like green tech and like AI, all of which have like really interesting um, interconnections with the way in which accelerationism is talking about technology. I think when I'm thinking about what kind of looks like the most ideal form of like this type of criticism versus the F is that I think that it would probably be centered definitely around like a critique of capitalism that was more about explaining how like more less of a question of like the future being already overdetermined but that the affirmative kind of investment in its relationship to technology in the future has already kind of like predetermined the limitations and the possibilities of its of like our uses of that technology and has also like predisposed us to decide like who should have the monopoly over such technology and then i think making like bases on like the unethicality of like that type of world ordering and thus trying to explain accelerationism as like an alternative way to think about how we progress move towards and envision the future which i think turns a lot of the more like uh, the, a lot of the answers that a lot of these policy teams have in terms of how they answer more pessimistic criticisms, but I also think there are really good uh, arguments for left-leaning accelerationism about why the state in its current condition and the way that it currently exists can't uh, kind of take up the kind of like radical necessary change that happens to uh, technology in order to push towards that kind of like left accelerationist worldview of like how we should think about the development of these things. I think that when I'm thinking about maybe some of the weaknesses of it, I think that accelerationist draws on like so much ideas about the possibilities of future that isn't really accessible right in front of us that it can be really hard to think about like ways that you can actually grab examples historically of like how people have literally used accelerationism but I do think there are a lot of ways in, in which you can kind of circumvent in other places a lot of the offense that teams generally have to teams that take that more historical like um route for the debate because i think that when you're kind of a jettisoning the idea that accelerationism is like predetermined only by like how the past is conditioned the future and also if you're making arguments about the way in which the affirmative is the one that kind of like ontologizes the way in which we think about the world around us then i think you can flip a lot of the arguments that teams are usually comfortable making against like critiques like uh capitalism when you put this kind of twist on it because i think that when they're making arguments about like how green tech has to be ine uh, inevitably developed and controlled by the state or why that like private institutions are inevitable and so it's just a question of like if we can open up the public to being able to have like access to doing things like you know changing the way in which we orient ourselves to tech who has access to it and like how it kind of like works works in the distribution of like water resources etc and I think when you're kind of con like considering those types of factors there are a lot of limitations that you could have to how the current kind of like world ordering in the state as a structure could commit itself in order to think about like the possibilities of tech that is something that exists outside of just like the ability for it to have radical redistribution but actually for it to contribute to the undoing of like how capitalism kind of like sutures the like telos that tech is like made for and I think that when you're kind of like creating that type of criticism you have a really strong kind of like setup for how you want to like uh create points of offense throughout the, like the rest of the portions of the flow i think that when you're thinking about uh some of like the framing portions of the debate i think that you could uh i think it's definitely smart to maybe frame this debate away from the question of materiality and make it more a question of like how do we envision ourselves as related to the future i think that there are really interesting ways that you can make arguments about how like fiat already make or fiat like the usage of fiat already concedes that the thing the one ac doesn't happen after the speech act of the app and that it's a question of how we build like skills for future development how we think about scenario planning 
learning as a practice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then to say that in order for us to be able to evaluate the 1AC on those terms, it means that we cannot like hold ourselves to the constraints of only the present, but rather like commit ourselves to like a radical ulterior uh, uh, kind of ulterior vision of like what we should do in the face of this kind of like climate water disaster, etc. I think if that's the case, then you have a lot of arguments to make about why uh, kind of like disavowing the usage and the centering of the state in those conversations is really important because you have so many arguments to make about, about like how the state's current existence is what ontologizes the world as it is, is what makes us believe that the world that it is in front of us is the way that it has to be forever, that there has to be this kind of like central governing system that determines like how we're able to orient ourselves politically and culturally for like the rest of time. And I think once you're able to make arguments about why envisioning that as decentered from our politics, then you have a lot of arguments about like how the world, the kind of like world of fiat presumes some of the strengths of this argument, but also how like the types of disagreements that the affirmative team would want to bring against it don't really make sense in a world where they're kind of framed around the same conceptions or theories about how we should evaluate things in relationship to how like fiat is like meant to be used. And I think in that context, you have a lot of really persuasive arguments that deal with both the procedural and the kind of like skills based types of net benefits that people want to make to this type of like framing of the debate. Additionally, I think that when then when you're trying to apply maybe some of this to how you should be framing the thesis contentions, I really think that you need to just go really, really hard on why there is no radical re envisioning of the future in relationship to like left leaning accelerationism that can include like the state in its current capacity. I think that you can make a lot of arguments about like how like the state is like something that like fast forwards us towards like immediate destruction because of the way in which it is already like sutured and tied to various structures of like settler colonialism, slavery, etc. that like make its like usefulness or efficiency just like not valuable in the context of how we actually create like a revolutionary reordering of the world. And then I think you can like create a lot of thesis level arguments about how if we want to make changes and radical changes to the way in which we kind of like rationally go about the status quo or the way in which we kind of like use the state as a rational actor for the status quo, then it, pro it like requires us to go beyond the current institutions that are like serving us and to create something that adjusts to the radical needs of those that are like most dispossessed by the, like our current relationship to capitalism, neoliberalism, etc. And I think that kind of like using this framing thesis is just like a setup for how you want to centralize your offense while still explaining why the way in which you're orienting the critiques relationship to how you're thinking about the past, present, and future as differential to a lot of the other ones that I think teams are used to, then I think you're really in an offensive position to like come out with a really strong way to like frame the rest of the flow and make your like link arguments, permutation arguments, etc. really flow really well. So hopefully this video was helpful for you and hopefully you'll tune into other videos I'll be doing talking about accelerationism and the rest of the series as a whole. Thanks for watching.